I didn't feel 5'3 when I was on the court. I would step on the court and I definitely did not think I was uh, the shortest one out there and I probably was. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a mentality I, I had and definitely anyone out there who maybe not be the tallest on your team, try and have that kind of mentality. And I guess that kind of made me an aggressive um, point guard as well. I didn't, I didn't mind driving into the trees and, and kind of throwing up some shots, but um, you know, if, if you're going to work hard, you're still going to get that opportunity no matter how tall you are. And... Good afternoon, ballers and ballettes, and welcome back to another episode of In a Minute Season 2. I'm your host, Coach Ollie, and alongside me is Producer P. Producer P, say what's up. What's up, everybody? Great. And now in this episode, we have another amazing special guest with us today. Uh, Producer P, go ahead and introduce her. Yeah, welcome back, everyone. We're glad that uh, everyone's tuning in. And, uh, we're loving the feedback, so keep it coming. Uh, this amazing special guest that we have to, joining us today all the way from uh, Indiana. She grew up in Indiana in a small town called Rockville. Uh, she played her NCAA basketball at Manchester University in Indiana, where she majored in sport, manage, sport management and business education. She also met a uh, alum of Been a Minute, uh, Coach Peter Krill, who we had on in season in, in season two, and they have, they're married with three wonderful children. Um, the love of basketball is what drove this special guest to pursue a career in sports, uh, working with multiple internships and jobs throughout her college year. Um, she worked in, in sports retail, the local YMCA, marketing, um, planning tournaments, uh, corporate partnerships, and much more, which I'm sure she'll touch on when we, we bring her on. To the, we bring her on. Um, after undergrad, she attended Ball State University, where she earned her master's degree in sport management uh, and worked as a graduate assistant doing research in sport marketing. Um, that research was crucial for her uh, in working with many companies that use sports and learning about how companies use sports as a as a marketing brand and in their day-to-day -day, um, in their day-to-day -day life and uh, she actually currently works for the uh, Indiana Pacers uh, uh, in the NBA and we'll get her to talk more about that as well too. Um, I can go on and on and, and talk about her bio but that will not do her justice so I will let her speak for herself um, welcome to the show, Mrs. Chelsea Krill. Are you there? Hey guys. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, Chelsea Krill. I'm, uh, I work for Pacers Sports and Entertainment. So on the NBA side, that's the Indiana Pacers. Um, I've been here for about five years. Um, and I work as a corporate partnerships, um, activation manager. So kind of what that entails is, um, working with all of our corporate partners. So, um, you know, some of the big names, obviously, you know, Gatorades, the Geico's, um, kind of things like that. Um, you know, I make sure that um, you see the Gatorade coolers on the side um, of the game, of the, uh, the sideline next to the players that uh, they're, maybe they're not drinking Gatorade because they don't have that endorsement, but um, it at least looks like they are drinking it um, <laughs> during a game. Um, you know, same thing you know, with uh, any signage you kind of see along the court side on TV, um, not the national televised games, but um, the local um, TV games, you'll, you'll kind of see those local partners. I kind of make sure that happens. So um, the sales guys put the deals together and then um, we as activation managers make sure um, their, their brand is seen, um, whether that be, you know, in arena, on TV, um, you know, different experiences with tickets and, you know, player appearances and things like that. So that's kind of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, at Pacer Sports Entertainment. Um, not only do I work with um, the Pacers on the NBA side, I also work on the W side. So with our Indiana Fever, um, I work, uh, we also do our foundation. So our non-for-profit arm of um, the business and then um, our Pacers gaming. So our 2K team. So we, we touch all of, uh, all of the teams that are under the Pacer Sports uh, Entertainment umbrella and uh, I get to work for uh, all of them. So it's, it's a very busy year and it's, it's more than just the, the nine months of the NBA season. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I'm going to sit back and I let coach Ollie take it away. Cause I I'm truly interested in learning and hearing your story, but also hearing about, you know, again, working for such a, uh, a story program as a uh, franchise as the, as the Pacers. So coach Ollie, take it away. Yeah. Uh, hi, Mrs. Grill. How are you? 
I'm doing well, thanks. How are you, Coach? I'm good, I'm good. So uh, let's get started with the rapid fire question. Love it. All right, so where are you from and where did you grow up? I am from Rockville, Indiana. It's a small town. Um, I don't know, maybe 5,000 people are in the uh, entire county. Um, it, you know, I graduated with 64 other students um, in, in high school. Uh, so like when I say small, I mean small. Um, I've stayed in Indiana my entire life. Um, all of my um, education, Manchester University is in Northern Indiana. Ball State is uh, just north of Indianapolis. Uh, so it's another Indiana school. And then um, right, out of, right out of college, I, I got a job in, in Indianapolis as well with a minor league hockey team. Uh, and so I've been in Indy since 2014. So have yet to get out of Indiana. Um, so I've been here my whole life. But you also went to school in Indiana, right, for university? Yes, yeah, Manchester University is uh, northern Indiana. Uh, it's, a, it's a D3 school. Um, I played basketball for a season, and that's kind of how I met Pete. Uh, and didn't continue playing my sophomore uh, through senior year, but um, still kind of stayed involved. Uh, I, I worked with the athletic department because I kind of knew from the very beginning I wanted to work in sports. So trying to get as much um, experience as I possibly could while I wasn't wasn't playing anymore I could still at least kind of be involved and I ran a couple tournaments for uh, both the men's and the women's teams um, for basketball you know helped out on the the, the football um, events you know kind of all the different um, sports that we had at Manchester kind of after I stopped playing kind of had a little bit more time to focus on my career a little bit in that sense yeah and what did you take at uh, Manchester University? Uh, I took, uh, I was a major in sport management with a business minor. Oh, okay. Um, if, I, if I were to redo it, I would have double majored in business as well, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, just, just had it as a minor. Okay. And you said you played your first year at uh, Manchester, right? Yes, and you I did. After that. Yeah, yeah, I stopped, uh, stopped playing my sophomore year. So when did you, you start playing basketball? Oh gosh, I don't know, probably like three years old, um, you know, and then probably five or, or six in like a local Y league. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you coached at all for basketball? I have. Um, I've coached junior high um, at the school level um, for both boys and girls. And um, I've helped with the AAU program as well. Um, I don't do that anymore. Once, once I had uh, CJ, my oldest kid, uh, three years ago, I kind of stopped um, because uh, working in, in sports as well, I'm already already gone about 50 nights a week. So um, and you guys know with coaching, that's even more of a time commitment. So yeah. um, taking a little pause while, while the kids, until the kids get a little bit older and maybe we'll tag team on Pete gets one kid and I'll coach the other. We'll see. <laughs> For sure. Uh, do you play any other sports besides basketball? I used to play softball and then I did a year of cross country in high school. Um, just did um, high school softball as well, but uh, you know, did the sometimes would do the softball like slow rec league, uh, you know, the adult leagues as I got older. But um, again, kind of taking a pause on that since since the kids came along. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite food and why? Uh, favorite food is pizza. Um, kind of uh, could have that multiple times throughout the week, and it doesn't get old. Like are we talking like are we talking like Papa John's dish? pizza or like deep dish or what? Sure. Um, I like Papa John's pretty good. You know, they're, they're a corporate sponsor, so we like to give them some love, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a local restaurant who actually a friend of ours um, owns that they've got the best pizza in town. So if you're around the West side of Indy, I can hook you up with some good pizza. Well, we might be there uh, again this, uh, hopefully uh, Christmas time with our university teams. We were there last uh, two years ago. I was able awesome. to Pete because we were, uh, we were in South Bend, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll come check it out. Yeah, there's lots of good tournaments down here. So yeah, if you're ever ever this way. For sure. Uh, what's one thing not too many people know about you? Um, um, that is a very good question. Um, I love fishing. That's probably a good, uh, something not many people know about me. Um, I haven't been able to do it in a while, but uh, I find it very relaxing. And um, a good summer day along a lake is, you can't really beat it. 
Are we mm. talking like regular fishing or like fly fishing where you stand in the water and just yeah. hang out? I would love to learn how to fly fish, but no, <laughs> I'm just regular fishing. All right, all right. Fishing, fishing seems to be a very popular topic with uh, our guests because we, we've had like previous guests and <laughs> they all love fishing. So I need to try it one day. Um, so it's, it's we hear that you're... Oh, sorry. I just said it was a good hobby, excuse me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, uh, we hear that you're married to Coach Peter Krill. So tell us about how you guys met and how your love of basketball extended to a love for Sure. Um, well, it's obviously just a thing in common. We both had, um, from what he tells me, um, during warm-ups, he, he saw my jump shot and he fell in love with my jump shot and had to talk <laughs> to me ever since. So I'll take that. <laughs> and uh, it kind of goes from there. We uh, had a couple classes together and he finally worked up the courage to, to talk to me and we, it went from there. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, basketball is obviously a common interest. He loves the NBA and I work in the NBA. So he's, uh, he gets the benefits of the tickets in that sense and <laughs> st still working to make Pacers his number one team. But I kind of understand, you know, the Raptors are the reason he played basketball. So I guess I'll take that. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're never going to convince me to be a Raptor. Sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. That's awesome, though. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for ask, answering my rapid fire questions. Uh, on the other side of this commercial break, Coach uh, Producer P has some more rapid fire questions for you. So we'll be right back. Great. This commercial break is brought to you by Sports Unlimited, located in Surrey, BC. Sports Unlimited is your home for all things team and corporate apparel. They can be reached at 604-597-3255 or online at www.sportsu.ca. Sports U, the place to be. back to many minutes uh we're joined today by uh chelsea krill all the way down in indiana uh, chelsea you still with us yes i'm here awesome um before we continue with our rapid fire questions uh, our topic for today is uh nothing short about it quote unquote um and to to the to the listeners to our to our, to our audience you know if anyone that knows most knows me i i'm a fan of double meanings Obviously, nothing short. The first meaning is, you know, Chelsea short, just like Peter <laughs> was. Um, and but also more intentionally, um, nothing short about it is that uh, there's no shortcuts to where you need to get to. Obviously, Chelsea, you were a former former uh, NCAA player. You obviously work your tail off to to get to the next level. So you know, and we'll we'll touch more on that. But we just wanted to highlight the topic of today's show and, uh, and, and why we have uh, such a wonderful person like yourself uh, on the show today. Um, as we continue on, um, I'm curious to know, I'm, I'm, our, our listeners are curious to know as well too, have you, have you traveled much? And if so, where and what's been your best trip? Yes, um, we ha I've traveled quite a bit. Um, my favorite trip is by far Greece, which I think Pete also talked about on his oh, he sure did his yeah. podcast. <laughs> um, it's it's beautiful. We we rented a car and kind of drove all over and just saw so many different different places from you know the beach to the history and um, obviously you know where the Olympics began. We we got to see you know some of the the original olympic track um again you know sp sports being a common interest for both of ours so um it was very cool and i would suggest anybody who gets a chance to to travel to put greece on their bucket list because it's it's a good one awesome that is amazing yeah definitely uh you know <clears throat> we as an academy are supposed to be going down to we've been invited the last couple of years to go to spain but we may have to pivot and go to uh, Greece next summer because you know, we, you know, between yourself, Pete, and from a few of the other guests who've been on, they've they've mentioned uh, they've mentioned Greece uh, several times. So I think that uh, you guys are convincing us away from Spain. <laughs> yeah, I, but it's a definitely a good one. I'd suggest it. Spain sounds good too. I've I've never been to Spain, but definitely would like to go to go to some more European uh, countries. And Spain's definitely on that list. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, speaking of traveling and, you know, that sort of thing, if we, if you were to be deserted 
or stranded, not deserted, if you were stranded on, a, on an island and you need you need three things for, to survive or three things that you absolutely need to have, what would those be? Um, so I'm going to recall back to Pete's podcast too and give him a little bit of crap on this one that he didn't say his family. Um, I'm going to put <laughs> say my family <laughs> um, is, is one of them. Uh, and then, um, uh, you know, probably, probably a, a set of books would be great if that counts as one thing, um, yeah. you know, something to entertain myself um, and a tent. Okay. I think big, maybe I can make camper? do with that. Are you a big camper? Uh, no, I, I did when I was a kid, but I, I don't really care for the hard ground too much and the <laughs> the birds at 5 a.m. I, I like my sleep, so um, camping's not one of my favorite. All right, fair enough. Um, so with, with I got to know though, if you go camping, are you like a s'mores kind of kind of person? Oh yeah. Or, oh yeah. Okay, good. So does that yeah, mean that, s'mores? Yeah. So does it mean that does that mean that you're sweet, sweet tooth or savor? Oh. Oh, yeah, sweet for sure. I, I, I love um, uh, too much sugar, that's for sure. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, my, I, a lot of, you know, people don't know this, but I, I love butter tarts. Like, love butter tarts. So if there's any butter tarts around, you, I know, <laughs> those are getting eaten. You know, that's kind of my only sweet tooth, really. That's, Very good. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, what is your all-time favorite basketball and or coaching moment? Um, you know, coaching moments is it's really just any time where you, you're, you kind of teach something to a player and then you see them actually, it may it finally click and they, they do it during a game. I, I don't know anything in particular, but anytime that happens, that's obviously one of the best, um, basketball moments, um, AAU. I mean, doing travel basketball was some of the most fun I ever had. Um, I mean, you guys are probably doing that right now, and hopefully some of your listeners, um, you know, are, this is kind of what you're doing is travel basketball. Definitely appreciate while you're doing it because it is, it's fun, you know, the overnight stays in the hotels and then, um, you know, friends that you're going to have forever. Um, uh, and then, and then you get to play basketball as well for like 10 games in one day. It's, it's exhausting at the end of the day, but man, does it, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I miss my playing days. I'm too old now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Way too old. Even when I coached Pete, and I was like, I was still a little bit at the tail end of my career. But after that, I was like, oh, well, now I just play old man, old man basketball. Yep. Um, but as a coach, Ollie would tell you, I still cook these guys at practice. So, Good. Man, as you should. As yeah, you should, right? we, we cooked them last practice. You didn't cook me last practice. What are you talking about? No, you and I coached. <laughs> oh, you and, okay. I was going to say, I was like, come on, coach, come on now. Um, <laughs> what's your, What's your favorite NCAA team? Uh, Purdue Boilermakers. It's kind of by really? default. My sister, yeah, my sister went there, and it's obviously an Indiana school. So, all right, all right. Wouldn't have wouldn't have guessed that, but you know, I thought maybe like you'd be like a Hoosiers fan. No, that my no. that's my dad's team, but I, I can't get behind the Hoosiers. <laughs> what's uh maybe this is a bit better than Pete's in the, with this question? Uh, what's your favorite type of music and why? um i'll go pop i like something good to to dance to and in my playing day is something to dribble to I, yeah that's kind of how i warmed up was to some good some good uh rhythms yeah do you get do you, have, do you ever get peter to dance like in the, the <laughs> no i, I ha no not really <laughs> no. <laughs> he's not much of a dancer no but yeah no it's not pete's thing um what is your all-time favorite basketball movie Oh, love and basketball. Hey, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You know, Coach Ollie hasn't seen it, so I think you need to give him heck for that. Yeah. How is that possible? That, that's what I said. Too. You, so like, you're you're still in school, aren't you? So it is, I guess yeah. that's a little old for you, but it, it ages good. You'll, you'll <laughs> still like it. Uh, Chelsea, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and uh, we'll get into kind of more of the topic of uh, today of today's. Uh, discussion um, this has been a minute we'll be right back this podcast episode is brought to you by form basketball academy located in vancouver bc form basketball academy offers multifaceted programs including one-on-one -on -one private training and film study 
with NCCP nationally certified coaches. To find out more information about this and other program or league opportunities, check them out at formbasketball.com. Form Basketball Academy. Become your best with us. All right, folks, welcome back to uh, Better Minutes. We're joined today by uh, this is Chelsea Creel from Indiana. Chelsea, you still with us? I'm here. Awesome. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the topic of t- uh, today's show is uh, <clears throat> nothing short about it, short being in, in quotations. And uh, as we mentioned, you know, obviously Chelsea's short, but doesn't mean that you can't play ball. And uh, but also there's no shortcuts in life. There's no shortcuts to getting to where you need to get to as far as basketball, which we'll, we'll, we'll touch on and we'll get, uh, we'll get Chelsea to touch on that in a little bit here. But before we, we, we get into that, we hear that you work, obviously you work for the Pacers. Um, have you met former Raptors assistant coach Nate Bjork? And if so, what's he like? I have not. Um, you know, due to COVID, our access to the team was basically um, nothing. Um, we could do a couple Zoom calls um, with the players and, and whatnot, but um, and I think we we had one as you know for our corporate partners with Coach Nate, but uh, uh, I have not personally met him. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, he ended up getting you know he was let go from the team and. You know, exactly. We wish, wish nothing but the best, and uh, it's unfortunate. But hey, hopefully, maybe we'll see him back with the Raptors. That's what Pete said. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, I'm sure he'll he'll find somewhere. Find find you know you know he's a good guy. He's a good coach, so he'll land on his feet somewhere. Um, exactly. Coach Ollie's got the next question for you, and I'm, I'm really curious to hear your your story about this or your answer about this. So, Coach Ollie, take it away. All right. Working for a storied NBA franchise like the Pacers must be pretty rewarding. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and what it means to you? Yeah, it, it is really reward, rewarding. Um, kind of, uh, I'd say freshman year of college, I, I knew I wanted to work in sports. Um, and obviously my love of basketball, um, the ultimate goal was the NBA. So getting to work um, with my hometown team um, um, you know, shortly after I graduated grad school, about two two years later, is is something that I don't take for granted. That's for sure, because um, there's only 30 teams in the NBA, and uh, um, you know, only a couple more um, each of that position of the position that I have. So it's it's not very easy to get into to what I do. So um, that's definitely something that I'm I uh, really appreciate and definitely don't take for granted. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Coach Paul, next question. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, you know, people are always ask me what my goals with basketball. You know, I, I went from working in medicine to, uh, to you know, working at a university where we, you know, you're coaching, you're doing all the things that are involved. You know, you also co teach a class with my boss and so on and so forth, right? And uh, it, it's, it's, it's fun, it's great, but everyone always says, you know, kind of what's your goal? What's your, like, you know, what's your five, five year plan? What's your six year plan? I said, you know, I'm going to be in the NBA. That's my goal. I'm going to be an NBA coach mm-hmm. in some capacity. Um, but also, you know, I want to be with the national team as well, too, which there's opportunities for me with that. But, you know, getting to the NBA and being around those guys. And I know quite a, I know quite a few people in the Raptors organization and their first world, they're a world-class organization. And I hear good things about uh, the Pacers as well, too. So you're, you're with a great franchise. Um, yeah, I'm good. And sticking with the NBA, um, they've made many concessions and, They've made great. They've gone to great lengths and made great strides in hiring more female coaches and executives and personnel. Um, what do you think that does for the game itself? Well, it only makes it better. I mean, you're uh, you're doubling your your pool of candidates. Um, you know, not only when you only kind of are interviewing men, it's it's fifty percent of the the plus, You know the the population there so kind of doubling the the potential um can only make it better and um you know it could be different points of view too i mean just any, with anything just with business as well diversifying um you know your office um diversifying you know your coaching staff as well is is definitely something that's good because you're not just having group think there you might have different opinions and um you know different points of views and different thoughts on things that you know that, that can only make it better. So, um, you know, more competition should lead to, um, you know, better outcomes. So hopefully that's, that's the case and we'll see even more, um, 
women coaches um, at the ranks and and coaching and, and officiating and, and kind of everything in the front office as well. Yeah, for sure. And do you feel then that uh, as we go along here, that uh, at, at some point, hopefully soon, that we'll see the first ever female head coach? Yeah, I would be shocked if it doesn't happen in the next five years. Um, somebody's going to get their shot and um, definitely waiting on the edge of my seat to see it happen. And I would love for the Pacers to be that kind of organization. And we, we had, um, you know, the first, uh, um, you know, uh, in Kelly Kroskoff, I, you know, I think she's, she's in the front office very high up. Um, I want to say, you know, VP or something or other um, on the basketball side. So um, she was uh, very good on the W side. I mean, we, she won a championship with the Indiana Fever um, in 2012. So she kind of, you know, worked herself um, into that position on the, the W side and, and it only grew from there. And, you know, now she's, I think it's probably her third or fourth season um, on the Pacers side, um, you know, helping with draft picks and, and coach and picking the coach and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be great, be great if uh, we could be that first team. So we'll see. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And, you know, a lot of pundits have said that uh, Becky Hammond out of the Spurs, is uh is kind of like that next in line to be a head coach what do you I mean I know it's a different organization but what do you what are your thoughts to that I'd love to see it yeah she's very deserving that's for sure I mean any coach um learning from um Popovich is uh obviously going to be good um wherever they go so she's not only learning from the best um so I, I, yeah I'd be shocked if she doesn't get a chance someday and and there's so many others too. I mean, Christy Tolliver from, she used to be on the Mystics. Now she's yeah, over in LA yeah. playing. So I'm yeah. um, yeah. not sure she's still coaching, but uh, anyway, you know, there's a couple of different former WNBA players and then even some just college, um, college players and coaches that have, are on the, on the sidelines too. So I'm sure it'll happen here in the next five years. I'd be pretty surprised if it doesn't. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I say so. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Coach Holly. Yeah, and uh, in what ways do you think that more young girls can get involved in basketball? Yeah, I mean, besides playing, of course, um, you know, I kind of mentioned it, coaching is, is one way, um, and then officiating, that's that's another oh, thing yeah. that yeah. you don't think about as much. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, as a player and a coach, you know, we kind of harp on officials, but that's, that's another opportunity oh, as yeah. well, and you can make some really good money officiating in the NBA. So we're talking six figures here. So while you're not going to be making player money, you're, you can make some pretty good money um, officiating in the NBA. So that's, that's another route, of course. Um, but I mean, you know, coaching and you kind of mentioned it, if, you know, more women on the NBA side are given that opportunity for coach, um, you know, hopefully it kind of trickles down to college teams and high school teams and whatnot to, you know, coach boys too. And not just, um, you know, not just the, the girls teams on the, the NCAA level and uh, high school levels. And so, I mean, hopefully that opportunity just kind of compounds for that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And uh, I've seen like in the last like four or five years or so, I've seen more uh, female referee in the NBA. Yeah. But not only in the NBA, like I think uh, in BC, like where we play on the West Coast, there's more female refs as well. Good, up. yeah. Yeah, it's a good opportunity. I mean, a good way to stay involved in in uh, in the sport, and maybe not necessarily. If maybe coaching is not your forte. Maybe like you know, rules is is your forte. That's, yeah, that's a good way to get some exercise and make some extra coin too. No doubt. Now, obviously, before I get to my <clears throat> my last question here, then Coach Ali is about the next segment here. But uh, you know, we mentioned about your height, and we <laughs> I, I, again, the two young girls are listening to this or you know, a parent or, you know, even if it's, if it's a, a young boy and he may not be six foot, you know, nine, six, ten, six, six, you know, we always say you can't teach height, but does height yeah. really matter or is it about heart? Uh, it's, it's most, I mean, heart is, it plays a big part in it for sure. Um, you know, I'm, yeah, being only five, three, it, I, uh, I didn't feel five three when I was on the court. I would step on the court, and I definitely did not think I was uh, the shortest one out there, and I probably was. Um, so you know, that's kind of a mentality I, I had, and definitely anyone out there who maybe not be the tallest on your team, try and have that kind of mentality. And I guess that kind of made me an aggressive um, point guard as well. I didn't, I didn't mind driving into the trees and, and kind of throwing up some shots, but um, 
you know, if, if you're going to work hard, you're still going to get that opportunity no matter how tall you are. And, and that definitely shows, I mean, on our team, you know, with the Pacers specifically, I mean, TJ McConnell, he's, he's definitely one of the shortest ones out there and not one of the tallest ones out there, but he led the league in steals this year. And um, so you can make your impact. And, and he was a very key pivotal sixth or seventh man for our team. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So and that and that ties to my last question. I mean, our I, our audience is is uh, young boys, young girls, you know, young women um, at the grassroots level. Um, and if there was a few things of, of advice, a piece of advice that you to you would give them, um, what would that what would those be? Oh, enjoy it. Um, I, I kind of touched on this with with travel basketball. I mean you don't know how much you're going to miss it until you miss it. Um, so while you're in that moment, really enjoy the moment, um, play the game because you enjoy it because you love it. Um, try and keep it fun. That's as, as a, as a player, I always, I always loved, I, I would always get multiple comments from coaches that you just look like you're having fun out there. It was, well, why else am I going to play? I mean, I'm going to have a smile on my face playing because I want to play the game and I love it. Um, and then I kind of, I try and coach that as well. I, I try to be the coach that, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't make the player not have fun. I mean, that's, it's, it's a game where we're supposed to enjoy it and, and have fun. So that's, um, something I would definitely try and tell anybody who's, who's playing the game. So. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Um, coach Ali. Yeah. Um, well that wraps up our time with our amazing guest. This is Chelsea Krill. Like uh, Coach Paul said, it was really awesome having you on. Um, I know Coach Paul and I had a great time. Uh, I hope you, you did too. And on behalf of Foreign Basketball Academy, thank you for coming on to our show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, good luck with the, the rest of the season. And again, thanks for, for having me. Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, when I'm in the end, I'll reach out to you guys. Please do. We will do. i talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, coaches. All right, folks, we just said goodbye to um, Chelsea Krill out of Indiana, the wife to uh, season one guest, uh, Coach Peter Krill. Um, I, I loved li listening to you know, her story and hearing about her working uh, with, with the Pacers. Um, but we'll, 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 touch them on, we'll touch more on that uh, after, the, after our commercial break. Uh, this has been a minute, and we'll be right back. This commercial break is brought to you by Sports Unlimited, located in Surrey, BC. Sports Unlimited is your home for all things team and corporate apparel. They can be reached at 604-597-3255 or online at www.sportsu.ca. Sports U, the place to be. Folks, welcome back to Been a Minute. So again, we just said goodbye to Chelsea Krill from Indi out of Indiana. Uh, today's topic is uh, nothing short about it. Um, Coach Ali, tell us tell us your thoughts about uh, having Chelsea on the show. What you what you took away? What you what uh, you loved hearing? Um, I loved hearing about what what she does at work. Is like I think if I ever uh, pursued like a business degree I think that would be what I wanted to do too like become I'm sort of like I have a position in the NBA where it's like uh it involves business but also I'm part of an NBA team so you said that not only is she um responsible or like connected affiliated I guess in a way with the NBA but also with the WNBA and uh the 2k gaming team as well that's really dope yeah so yeah yeah, it's exciting, you know, for for our listeners, like, you know, the sky's the limit, you know, don't uh, just limit, don't uh, just, don't pigeonhole yourself, if, if, if you know what that means, just don't say, okay, I'm going to go on this one path, and that's it, you know, there's many paths out there that you can take, there's many opportunities, many doors to be open, 
and you know if sport is your love and you want to be able to combine sport with uh, with business or in my case sport with medicine or sport with law you know there, there's many avenues for you to do that and uh, none better than the, than the NBA so it was really great to hear to hear Chelsea's story to hear what again like you said what she what she does with her with her role with the Pacers and hopefully this inspires uh you our listeners um coach ali as we always do we finish out the show with possession 24 um and we're we're gonna kind of move away from our our dna and our and our, our offensive dna our defensive dna and we're just gonna simply talk about uh, talk about a few concepts um now oftentimes if you've heard me say offense is spacing and spacing is offense um for our listeners kind of touch on that what does that what does that mean what, why is that important why does why do i harp on it why do why what is what is most coaches harp on that yeah it's uh it's a basic concept and like it's a fundamental concept that everyone that plays basketball or five on five needs to know um spacing is important because it allows uh maybe you and like another player to play a two-man game uh, other you just have your other teammates space out even the floor it drags out the defenders also so if the entire team were in like one side of the court say one one half of the court then all the defense ha- the defense doesn't have to move they just have to stand there and you, you have no space to score or create your shot so spacing is offense because spacing creates offense and offense is spacing gets the same thing on the way around so yeah. yeah for sure for sure now when we if we flip over to the defensive side of things if we talk about being in help defense what for you know again hopefully that people are listening they they know how to play help defense but yeah. uh for those maybe new to the sport or maybe just new to high higher performance training or just you know they haven't uh, gotten the type of training that they they should be. Uh, what what has been in help defense be? Um, help defense. Well, there's strong side help and there's weak side help, right? So let's start off with strong side help. Strong side help is when you are guarding um, a person that's on the side of the the dribbler, like the dribbler is driving. Let's say you're on the left side of the court. Okay. You're guarding the left shooter. And the person, the ball handler dribbles to the left. You're, that means you're strong side help because they're coming to you. And mm-hmm. strong side help usually we don't like the strong side help defender to fully um, commit, stop the defense. Yeah, we kind of like them to grab stunt. a little bit and then come back. Yeah, the, so it's a little stunt, stunt recovery. A little right stunt, there. yeah. Yeah. And um, weak side help is where you're on the opposite side of the dribbler. Uh, the dribbler is all handlers going to the left side. You're on the right side of the court, mm-hmm. and you that's where you end up being under the basket or stepping a little bit more than under the basket and to help. Because, uh, in the case of you know your, your teammate getting beat, then you step up and uh, get them to recover, or you can even veer. Uh, mm-hmm. You can tell your, your teammate to veer, and they recover every, the, the entire team rotation switches. And that's yeah, when, that's really important. And the, the whole veering is xing out because you know if you're beat, you gotta go back this point in time. So you gotta help. And if you can't tap from behind, then you gotta veer out and x out and guard the next, uh, guard the furthest. Usually it's gonna be the furthest person or whatever it is that your teammate is gonna let you know. Um, but basically, what you're saying is, you and I liked it. You said, you know, you you step up for the help, and you are trusting that if you step up, that someone else has your back. You know, so yeah. oftentimes we say with, with form is do your job and trust your teammate. I use the same thing for my university boys, right? Do you do your job and you trust that your teammate. So if you're going to be the first help, you got to be the first help. You, you got to commit to the help, right? Yeah. And uh, you got to trust that someone's going to you have your back for that second help. And if you do your job and the other person, the other, you know, boy or girl doesn't step up for the second help, well, your coach is cussing that player out not cussing you off, not being the first help, right? Yeah, you got to help the helper. Help the helper, exactly. 
Well, folks, uh, this brings a close to another show for us. Uh, hit us up on our socials. You can find us on Instagram at uh, f.o.r.m.basketball. Find us on Twitter at form basketball, F O R M basketball. Our uh, website is uh, www.formbasketball.com. Um, this has been a minute. This is producer Pete. Uh, we are, you know, again, now joined by Coach Anand today. He sends his regrets, but uh, he'll be back in our next episode. Uh, Coach Ali, send us home. All right, guys. This is the end of the video, uh, end of the episode. Um, we were joined by uh, Coach Chelsea Krill, and uh, it was amazing having her on. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes to come. We're out. Peace.